Here's where we say we're... welcome to the McQueen Family Kitchen. Welcome to the McQueen Kitchen. <laughs> welcome to the McQueen Family Kitchen today. We are going to be trying to make some French baguettes, you know, the long French bread that you see in the grocery <laughs> store. I saw a video on YouTube by John Kirkwood, and I'm going to link it below. And so we're going to try to make our own French bread. What do you think about that, Camden? Yes. Do you like I bread? I want some candy in it. This video, you want candy in the bread? This video has 11 million views, uh, so it's legit. It looks it's pretty like simple. There's, there's so candy. let's try to make some French baguettes, shall we? What do you think? <laughs> okay, so Mr. Kirkwood alleges that we need to start with 25 ounces of strong white bread flour. Now, um, I don't have strong white bread flour. I just have all-purpose flour, so that's what we're going to use. Next, he said we need a half of a teaspoon of instant dried yeast. Once again, I'm messing up already. And um, I just have the active yeast in the red packet that I make a teaspoon of, put it right in the bowl, and then do exactly like what he says and just give it a little whisk. So the next ingredient that we're gonna use um, that Mr. Kirkwood says we need is one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Now, mind you, I don't have any kosher salt. Um, I have some good sea salt from Costco, so that's what we're gonna mix in there and just uh, call it good. So finally, we need 19 ounces of cool tap water, which I am very bougie over here, so I use the finest filtered refrigerator water, and we put 19 ounces in there, and we're just gonna give it a little mix. Now, mind you, mine at this point is not looking like Mr. Kirkwood's. I don't have one of those official like um, scales that you weigh food on. I only have one of those glass measuring cups. So that's how I got to the 25 ounces of flour, 19 ounces of cool tap water. So nevertheless, I persisted, even though I can see it's wrong, it's very liquidy. So I went ahead and uh, mixed it up, put the top on and let it rest for 45 minutes for the first uh, proofing. Now I came back in 45 minutes and this actually looks like pancake batter. It looks like nothing of the sort of what Mr. Kirkwood made. So I decided to go off script to make mine look like his. And uh, I put a little bit of extra flour in it. So I'm messing up already, but here we go. I put about half a cup of flour, three quarters of a cup of flour in there just to make it look. His looked like dough and mine looked like pancake batter. And so here was my um, first folding is me folding some extra flour into it because mine was just very very liquidy so obviously the measurements didn't go right so this is me mixing in some additional flour to get it to where it's more like a soft dough and even then i feel like it's still not right but you know what we're just gonna press on because i didn't use these materials so now we're gonna keep going so um i'm not gonna make you watch me stir all of this so let's just skip forward so I put the top on and I come back for my second 45 minute break. I open it up for the second folding and it's actually something that I can spill out on the counter to fold for a couple of seconds like Mr. Kirkwood does. So I take it out of my bowl and uh, wet my hands and then uh, just give it a little fold. It's still pretty sticky, but he said it would be. So I just fold it a couple of times and throw it right back in the bowl. Okay, so it's time for my third folding, and Mr. Kirkwood has, you know, techniques of how the different folds go. Um, I am not that professional, nor nearly as capable as him, so I just go ahead and fold it as best I can to make it look as legit as I can like he did um, for a couple of seconds and then throw it back in the bowl. So I come back after another 45-minute break. Scrape all my bread out onto the counter. That's still dirty from the last 45 minutes before. Scrape it out, give it a little fold, and uh, just let it make its magic.
So then finally, because I can't count and because I'm not paying attention, I actually come back for a fifth fold um, because I'm just trying to do too much at home with these kids. And um, I wet my hands. I lose count of how many folds I had done. But I pull it out and just fold it one more time just for good measure. As you can see, I got some little extra grubby hands in there. Um, we fold it and then put it back and let it rest. So now that I've used up about four or five hours trying to make this dough right, you know, giving it four 45 minute times, um, I actually go to bed and wake up the next morning. So <laughs> I wake up and my dough looks like this. It has bubbled and I know this is definitely not right. You know, Mr. Kirk was said nothing about letting it rest overnight, but here we are. So I dust some flour on my um, countertop dust my dough. I know it ain't right, but we're going to just try to make it work. So I put some flour in. My dough is still very sticky, so I just try to fold it over. And Mr. Kirkwood says that um, we should divide the dough into four even parts. He said they should be about 11 ounces each. Um, once again, I don't have a scale, so I just kind of eyeball it and um, just divide it with this big, huge machete knife that I have. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is pre-shape the dough pieces, which means just like kind of roll them up and get them kind of looking like little baby baguettes. So I'm gonna show you guys the first one. I'm not gonna make you sit through me doing all of them, but I just um, put, put it in some flour, patted it down and then rolled it up so it could be like a cute little French baguette. So I have all of my little baguettes rolled up and as you can see, they are not of similar sizes, but that's okay because you know, this is home cooking. We're going to cover it in some cling film or some saran wrap, whatever you like to call it, that has been lightly oiled and we're just gonna let that sit um, for about 20 minutes. So after that 15 or 20 minutes has passed, you're gonna take your little rolled dough which look like perfect scrolls of perfection and um, just put a little flour on your countertop and roll it out you're gonna press it down into a rectangle and uh, pop all the air bubbles out and roll it up into the baguette form and let it rest again now um, i'm gonna digress for a minute and just politely draw your attention to this uh, chocolate arm that comes into my frame see i get no respect around here this is my husband in the middle of my YouTube video interrupting to uh, make himself a cup of coffee in our raggedy old Keurig. So there's that. Please don't mind his arm. I could have taken it out, but why for what? So you keep going even though your family hates you and uh, you just roll up your little baguette in its little form. So where you're going to put your baguette is on what he calls a baking cloche, which you can just use a um, cotton pillowcase and put some flour on it and we're just going to let it rest for 20 minutes and then a few minutes while the oven is heating up so this is me peeling my bread off of the keurig machine and trying to fold it into another rectangle so i can roll it up and add it to the bunch So after we've gotten all our bread on the baking cloche, it's time to uh, get ready to put it in the oven. So we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees and start to boil some water. Uh, when the water is boiling and the oven is preheated, I put it in a pot in the lowest rung in my oven and closed it. And that creates a little bit of a crispy, steamy atmosphere so the outside of your bread is crispy. So. I take two of my baguettes and put them on a lightly oiled baking pan and throw them right in the oven because I'm so excited. Now, I had forgot two of the steps. I was supposed to score my baguettes, which means cut them on the top and then 
spray them with water so I can have a crispy outside. So this is me a couple of minutes later going back to my baguettes. Letting all the steam out of the oven, spraying some water in the oven to uh, help them be crispy. So after about eight minutes, you're supposed to turn them around so they bake evenly. And then after about 15 minutes, they should be done and mine are crispy, so I pull them on out. So this is me trying to do it right the second time with my other two baguettes. This is me trying to take a knife and keep my phone in one hand and score it. And then spray them with water so the outside can be crispy and delicious while the inside is soft and chewy. Me closing my oven, or before I close the oven, spray a little water in there so it'll be steamy. And this is how they turned out. They're not perfect, but I'm really pleased. Thank you so much, Mr. Kirkwood. This was a really fun video, an easy recipe. It took a long time, but I'm really glad about how they came out. My family ate them and didn't complain. So what else do you want? Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.